everybody and welcome back. It is our final week of the Wine Challenge. Can you believe it? It's gone so fast. Gosh, well, what I've done is I've lined up a little bit of a treat for you this week. Seeing as it's the final one, we've gone for something a little bit special. We've gone for a lovely little fizz. Um, here we have the Dof. Um, so the Dof Cremant d'Alsace. So this is a French Cremant and it comes from the Alsace region of France. So Cremant is um, a group of sparkling wines which is made in the same method as Champagne, um, but it's not made in the Champagne region of France. So it's got the whole traditional method um, to make it, including ageing on lees. So this one spent about 18 months on lees. Now you may remember way, way back our very, very first wine challenge wine, um, which was the Villanelle Carver. Um, that was also aged on lees, so you've got that lovely kind of toasty creaminess coming through from that because of the lees um, ageing. If you don't remember, lees ageing is essentially an ageing process where a certain amount of the yeast, once it has created um, the alcohol, is left in there to kind of add in a bit of extra flavour for a set amount of time before being removed. So the Alsace is actually the main region in France where they produce Cremant, but they do have certain other places that do it as well. But Cremant is predominantly made from the Pinot Blanc grape, um, which is then blended with various other grape varieties. So this one in particular is 50-50 uh, between Pinot Blanc and, I'm going to butcher this, Auxerrois, I think it is. So, um, I've had this chilling um, in the fridge, so best to have it a little bit chilled, don't over chill it, maybe 20 minutes to half an hour, so that you get all of the aromas and all the flavour coming through. And I'm going to do something a little bit special today. I'm actually going to attempt to savour the bottle. Now, I haven't done this before. It could go horribly wrong. I might just wind up giving up and just taking the cork off. But let's give it a go. Okay, so wish me luck, everybody. Fingers crossed. off uh, usually it just comes underneath that and um, I seem to have just taken a chunk out of the top of the bottle don't worry cleaned it all up made sure there's no glass or anything there I'm not gonna hurt myself but that's all a little bit of fun anyway the main thing is we've got the wine open let's give it a go let's go through our five S's for the last time so we've got S number one we've got C so I'm going to pour myself a measure here it's um Got quite a bit of fizz to it because I did hit it quite a few times with a knife. So I can see that it's quite a nice sort of pale golden colour, but I think there's a little bit of a green, greenish tinge in there as well, sort of more along the edges of the glass. It's obviously got a good fizz to it. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, pretty much it for S number one. S number two, let's give it a sniff. So it does smell um, a little bit champagne-y, as it would. Um, I think I'm getting more along the lines of a little hint of citrus, but mainly like um, like green fruit. Yeah, I'd say definitely more kind of green fruit, but there's also a slight kind of almost floral, like a slightly sweeter floral though, um, scent to it as well. Hmm. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to get from the preliminary sniff. I'm going to give it a little bit of a swell, not too much, because I don't want to aggravate it, and especially with the amount of fizz that's going through it at the moment. So S number three, and S number four, we'll give it another sniff. Yeah, I think it's, it's definitely more of the same kind of coming through. I think definitely the green fruit's coming through a little bit stronger, but it's more of a, it's not like a sharp green fruit. Like, you know, sometimes you get apples that are quite bitter. Um, it's a little bit juicier. Maybe like a little hint of lemon as well. Okay, okay, let's let's skip ahead. Um, we've waited long enough to give our final line a little try. So S number five is sip. Cheers, everybody. Ooh. So first preliminary sip, just kind of let it coat my uh, coat my tongue a little bit. It's got a nice fizz to it. It's got a good acidity, but it's not it's not super super sharp acidity. Yeah, I'd definitely say there's still a little bit of a um, little bit of citrus in there. Definitely, I think more along the lines of like a, a lemon, like a little squeeze of lemon. Um, and for the green fruits that I thought I could smell, 
I don't know, I think it's something more, more along the lines of like a pear, um, like a nice green pear. And then right at the end, you get that kind of slightly warm, almost creamy toastiness coming through. Um, and that would be from the traditional method, the aging. It really does taste like a nice champagne almost. And Obviously, because it is essentially, you know, very similar to a champagne, but made in different areas and, and definitely through the same methods. Um, it's a really nice alternative, um, a slightly less dear alternative um, to popping a nice bottle of, uh, of champagne. It's quite, um, it's quite refined. I guess the best way I can kind of put it is it all just kind of balances together really, really well. You know, you've got that little bit of sharpness, that little bit of acidity, but also a little bit of creaminess and toastiness. And, you know, you've got your, your green fruits, your pear, at least I can, I can taste pear, um, and a bit of citrus as well. Because it's kind of a combination of all of those together, um, it's got a bit of complexity to it, but it's, it's done in a way where it's not overbearing or overpowering. It is really quite, quite delicious. So those are my thoughts, um, but let's have a little look at the tasting notes, see if I've got it all horribly wrong. So it's a dry and elegant cremant, showing hints of quince. Um, I'm pretty sure quince is kind of along the same lines as a pear. Um, I think it's like a pear that you have to cook or something, something like that. So I think that kind of, you know, weighs up with what I was saying. Um, white flowers. I think I could maybe get flowers or a slight floral hint on them though. I couldn't really taste it as much. But citrus, definitely, a little hint of lemon. Fine bubbles. Um, I don't know whether it's because I've hit it so many times with a knife, but I think my bubbles are maybe a little bit stronger than fine. Um, good length and weight. That's two things that I didn't really touch upon. Um, the length of this wine, yeah, it does that thing like, like a few of the wines have, especially last week's, where it kind of lingers on your palate a little bit, lingers on your tongue a little bit after you've swallowed it. And weight as well, you know, it's got a good body to it um, without being a really, really full-bodied wine. I don't think I'd really want a sparkling to be super, super full-bodied, you know, you want, the whole idea is it's meant to be kind of light and refreshing, you can have it as an aperitif, you know. Um, but it's got a good amount of body to kind of balance, again, with all the other things that are going on in there. One thing that the notes don't particularly touch upon is obviously the yeasty flavours you might get going through. So again, that would be from the ageing on the lees. So I got a little bit of kind of like a creamy toastiness. It's almost like a, it's almost like a coating in my mouth um, after, after the initial flavours come through um, and after I swallow it as well. So that would be part of the, the length the finish on the line as well. So for a cheese pairing this week, um, we have gone for the Garstang White, um, which we have had before. We've had it with one or two of the wines throughout the challenge. But I felt like this wine is quite decadent um, and I wanted something quite creamy to go with it. Um, I think hopefully the kind of sharpness and acidity that you kind of get on the initial sip of the creme will be quite nice and cut through the creaminess of the Garstang. I mean, look at how creamy that garstang is. I shall cut myself a slice. And I'm using some of the little toast crackers as well, again, um, full of like little nuts and fruits and stuff. So let's give it a whirl. Cheers. Mmm. It's so rich and creamy and gooey. It's absolutely delicious. And then you've got the, the kind of fizz and the acidity and the kind of citrus notes from the wine just kind of cut through, they just slice through the cheese really, really well. And then that end note, so slight kind of toasty creaminess to the wine as well, just really complements that creaminess that you get through the cheese. I just feel like it all kind of comes together really, really nicely. It is just a really, really nice pairing. And again, the saltiness from the cheese does the same thing as it's been doing throughout the challenge really helps bring out those fruits as well so you do get a little bit more of that green pear popping out through there or quince as the tasting note said if you were looking for other foods to pair with um with a cremant with this one in particular uh, you've got a few different options so obviously you've got seafood it tends to work very well with white wines especially sparkling as well um because it's got a bit of acidity to it and because it's got that fizz to it 
it could really cut through um, the kind of slight light greasiness that you would get with fried calamari or even fried shrimp um, because the calamari and the shrimp are both quite light in kind of taste and texture and they've got that slight kind of crispy kind of um, oiliness on the outside and again I just think that would pair really nicely. You've got kind of creamier sort of canapes and um, if you're serving this at a dinner party you know with a few little pre-dinner nibbles um, that would be perfect. Something with a little bit of creaminess, a little bit of cheese um, would be ideal. Or you can go down the route which I have here. Um, I've got a little bit of um, prosciutto, so you've got your cured meats as well. Um, the saltiness and also the fattiness um, that you get running through those meats should balance really, really nicely with that kind of acidity in the wine. So um, I'm going to try it with a little bit of the prosciutto that we have in the bar. So excuse me, it's not going to bother with the cracker this time. Um, and bon appétit. Mmm. Mmm. In a similar way to um, the saltiness in the cheese, this has quite a high salt content because obviously it's cured. So it really kind of almost takes away the acidity of the wine and allows all the other flavours to kind of really shine and come through. And also having that kind of slight meatiness as well really works well with the, the fruity flavours that you've got going on in the wine. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely something I'd go for again. Well, I can say that I have thoroughly enjoyed this Cremant. Um, it's the first Cremant that I've ever had. Um, and I think I'll definitely be getting it again for those special occasions where I'm not quite looking to go for champagne. And this leads us to the end of the wine challenge. I can't believe it's been 22 weeks already. We worked through some amazing wines from all different countries across the world. Um, I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. I really, really hope that you have too. It would be so, so lovely to hear from you all and get a little bit of feedback, see what you liked, see what you didn't like. I want to thank you all for joining in and for those that have um, been giving me feedback and been so interactive. I know some of you have been absolutely on it with the videos and the photos and your own reviews of the wines. It's been really, really great feedback for us to hear. Our bar is now officially open and um, we're doing tasting events on Friday nights and we're open throughout the weekend as well. So please, it would be lovely to come in and see you and try some wines with you in here too. Have an amazing summer and I hope to see you all soon. Cheers, everybody.